Hello, and welcome to the Queen City Guitars shop. Uh, my name is Aaron, and this is where I build guitars in Oakland, California. Um, I often find that people express an interest both in what makes my guitars unique, and also in learning a little bit more about the process of building guitars. So I thought, what better way to address that interest than in making a series of videos where I could go through the steps that I take to build a guitar and discuss the hows and the whys of what I'm doing and in that way give people a little window into the shop and a chance to see some of the aspects of the guitar that are not as readily apparent in the finished instrument. Um, so before I pull out my current build I thought it would be nice to take a little tour of my shop. Um, we are in an old cookie factory in Oakland. It has been divided into a mix of residential and commercial spaces, of which I occupy one, and I also share my small and messy shop with an essential part of the building's sprinkler system, uh, the sprinkler riser. This is one of two risers in the shop, or in the building, and I get the joy of sharing space with this one. Um, and it's a small shop, but this is actually about twice as big as my previous shop in Oakland though I think I've done a really good job of spreading out into the space. So, a little tour of the shop, we're just going to spin in a little circle. We've got a go bar deck, it's got some estate sale tools that I picked up recently that I need to find a place for. Um, moving along, we have some art supplies, uh, a few various tools, a shelf full of printing supplies, um, I make a unique label for every guitar. They're often um, a mix of etched plate prints and hand illustration and maybe some painting. Um, yeah, they're just a nice little unique feature for every instrument. Um, I've got a handful more tools, a cabinet full of shellac for French polish and guitar parts and various tools, sharpening stones. There's a lot of specialty tools in guitar building and I find it can be challenging uh, just to find places to put them all. Um, so then over here we have one of the few machine tools, electric machine tools in the shop. Uh, drill press. This is pretty indispensable. Um, it's getting to be about time to upgrade, but this one works pretty well for now. It's sitting on a bench. This is the first workbench I had. Um, my first shop lasted about four months in Denver. I lived in an old house, and half my bedroom was a bedroom, and the other half was a wood shop. Um, this bench was never really sturdy enough to do like hand planing and that sort of stuff on, but it worked well enough for the time. Um, after about four months I packed up and moved off to New Mexico and that was the last time this uh, really consistent use for doing doing work on. Um, currently it's just sort of a staging area uh, allowing me to place stuff on here without cluttering up my main bench where I want to do work. Um, it has got a fondue pot because it's important to have hot cheese any moment of the day um, and it has got currently a bunch of things for French polish as I just finished the French polish on this guitar that's hanging up. Um, we've got chisels, a bending iron, a wall of planes, some general saws and woodworking tools, um, a bookshelf with various tools, a lot of woodworking books and notebooks. I try and keep extensive notes on guitars that I've built so I can go back and reference uh, in the future. Um, we've got a frame saw. Previous to this shop I did a lot of resawing of backs and sides and tops. Um, I don't use this in this current shop very much because the wooden floor makes the bench slide like crazy when I use that saw. But I keep it around because it would be nice to be able to use in the future. Um, the main 
centerpiece of the shop is this bench. When I got back from New Mexico, I set up in an art studio building in Denver. Uh, I built this bench and I started working. Um, the design is taken from a bench that was made <coughs> excuse me, on the Woodwright's shop. Um, I really like the, the angled legs. They stay out of the way and I have about seven inches of free top on this side with no legs in the way. But since they're angled out, it stays really, really stable. Um, and behind this door, I have a humidity controlled closet, which is where I keep guitar wood and guitars that are currently in progress. Alright, so this is my current build. Um, it's, it's possibly more ideal if we had started the videos and the guitar simultaneously at the beginning. Um, but I think this is actually a pretty good place to start. And we can go back and fill in the steps up to this point later. Uh, anyway, so looking at this guitar, you might notice a couple of things that make it at least somewhat unique. Uh, in construction. The first of those is you'll notice that I use solid linings on my guitars. Um, all of my guitars are made with solid linings and it's it's a little bit different from the curved lining that is common on a lot of mass-produced instruments. The idea is basically that I want to add a little stiffness to the rims because I want the rims to be a solid base for both the top and the back to vibrate on um, because the top and the back are what I want making the sound of the guitar. You may also notice that I have an extension on both the top and the back of my heel. Um, I do that for a number of reasons. They all basically relate to having a strong upper bout and to having a solid and stiff uh, neck body join. Um, I pretty much make a, a standard rectangular heel block and then I cut a shelf in in both the top and the back and they're angled so that the angle matches the respective radius of each plate um, and then I glue in the extension uh, they're very carefully fit and glued in the shelf is not quite all the way to the back of the heel, um, if you can see there. The extensions are vertical grain quarter sawn and the grain lines run in the direction of string tension. I want to maximize the stiffness in that direction and I want to minimize the weight of the extensions. Um, I also glue in a little piece at the place where the extension and the heel block join together. Um, specifically so that I can smooth that transition and reduce the stress uh, in that place, in that point. So the next steps on this guitar are going to be doing a lot more contouring of both the heel and the tail block and also contouring the inside edge of the lining to round it off. Um, I've got some rosette work that I need to get done. I've got back braces and also top braces that need to be cut out. And I've got a little bit of final thicknessing of the top and the back. So we'll pick up at one of those steps or maybe a combination of those steps next time. Um, but I think that's all for today. Uh, if you would like to learn a little bit more about building guitars or if you're just interested in seeing more of my work, you can follow the link in the description below and hope to see you next time. Thanks.